Was there a shot here? Well, yeah, the jump shot. <laughs> no, he can clip the he can clip the one here and try and miss the green six, bringing the cue ball down into a safe area. Bit thicker than he would have liked. Perhaps not. Sorry about that, Efren. Well, slap your knee, yeah, Steve sorry, Davis. Sorry. Question in the maestro. Apologies. I'll blame the fact I couldn't see the whole table from that angle. <laughs> Marvellous shot there from Efren Reyes. Flirting a little bit with that corner pocket. Once again, asking the question to the Bustamente. Get your break, get your jump cue out. We have uh, a lot of interest in uh, this match around the world oh my god he's gone two and one what a oh, shot that yes. was oh well shot of the tournament definitely one of the top three we've seen just look at this i'm going out and buying one of them where'd you get them <laughs> i want one of those i want a bustamenti jump cue tomorrow Fantastic shot by the Maestro. Oh, yes, heart of the pocket. One of the shots of the tournament. And you can imagine if Absolutely. that was in the last rack, that would have been one of the mega shots ever Did, played in the game. Didn't that bloke Sam Davis do a very good shot length of the table, hit the black pot the nine the other night, that, that Davis bloke? Sammy Davis Jr., Sam Davis. Oh, yeah, but that was, uh, that was a skillful shot and played for Ben Bustamente and immediately puts... Oh, get stuck into that, mate. Yes. Oh, dropped wow a bit. Shh, don't eat with loudly. <laughs> you know what happened earlier in the top? He's going for another bit. Yes, a oh. bit of side on that, a bit of right-hand oh. side. Now, why He's got it! <laughs> why go for that bit when he could have gone for the outside bit? If I could just tell you straight that. He could have gone with the outside bit and got less chocolate on the side of his mouth. Ray is going, swerving off two cushions, perhaps even one, to try and contain this situation. Could be in trouble here though i think he's going to be other than the fact that it's going to be very very awkward queuing for francisco bustamente bustamente is going to get the step ladders out here to get enough backspin on this oh he can just get by it without having to jack his queue up in the air he's going to be rammed up behind this seven ball and the eight Race to 11, I'll remind you. And this could be very, very tight in the later stages. Two choices for Reyes. The two cushion escape round the back of the nine or the one cushion escape. Step in, Busty. Yes, but not as easy to step in as you would initially think. That five ball has made this two missable. And also the positional side of the shot is very difficult as well. Yeah, he could uh, sling the white, having hits a thin. Well, no trouble then. Sweet on the red. He made that look very easy. He's not ideally placed on the three cue ball will be going away from the orange five and if at any time you're confused as to the order of the balls just check along the bottom of the screen most of the time we show which balls are left remaining on the table and which balls and the order of which they have to be potted in this is a straightforward sequence we've seen many times before and always remember you are allowed to belly ant or to plant from the low ball to a different ball Say the six is on the pocket and you're on the one, you're going to roll up and knock it in. And if the nine's looking adjacent, you can whack the low ball into the nine. Bit of a dodgy shot there by Bustamente, getting a bit of unwanted spin on the ball. It's made the cue ball stay closer to the cushion than he wanted, but a great recovery. And a great bit of English to make this angle perfect for a little old... Dink out from the cush. Stop shot needed here. Five apiece. And unlike a couple of the matches yesterday that tended to drag on for ages, this match is motoring through. Five, five. Buster Menti pulls it back. So a tense, nervous match. We're moving on to the 15th right now. The score, 7-7. Seven, seven.
Reyes frustrated with the break. Not as much leg kick there. And that one, once again, if the one isn't going in the pocket for Reyes, it is making its way to that head cushion, as it's known in head string cushion, as it's known in nine ball pool. The bottom of the table for snooker players. The top of the table, apparently, for pool players. The long bank from Reyes and an important bank from Reyes. He knew he had to play that aggressively. Never touch the sides. Well, nearly never. What a great shot. Sometimes a, a shot like that can turn the match. Reyes has done that on many occasions. I remember a marvellous bank he played against Jimmy White. So to knock Jimmy White out in the match 9-8 couple of years back in this very tournament when Reyes was in all sorts of trouble he produced the bank and looking like 8-7 to Reyes what a fascinating match this is you know it's over so quickly I mean they're playing at roughly twice the speed of racks as the table upstairs which is obviously a much more considered match you never can tell how the balls go if they go in awkward positions you get slower racks but these two players have played in, in open table play more or less to perfection. Well, that's a great tribute. I think uh, the whole thing is that, uh, again, gun on with genius and madness and the mad shots. The shots that they can conceive are probably in a broader spectrum or band of knowledge or imagination than anybody else's. The Filipinos take a kick is for granted. They take bank shots for granted. They take jump shots, as we've seen, a part of reference. There is a lot of imagination in every circumstance, hence a quick game. Oh, what, a, what an unlucky break. How did that cue ball get up in that pocket? Just have a look. Every rack of nine ball is a different split. How did the cue ball make its way into that pocket? How unlucky is that? And that probably... Uh, equals the bad luck that Francisco had in rack two when he was so unfortunate in uh, scratching. Uh, but at this critical stage of the match, obviously the mistakes and the bad luck become magnified. Here we go then. Don't see any problems other than that the brown's a bit adjacent to the pink, so there's limited angle as an attack there. Yes, I wondered there whether Francisco Bustamante could have knocked that brown into uh, the pink away from the pocket. But obviously it must pot quite easily past the brown seven. Uh, into open play once again. The only problem where the four is, is that he, he has less options to get back on the five. Can he uh, develop the situation uh, with the cue ball here? Well, he, he can definitely make the four. But it's what he can... I, I think he's obviously going to be uh, cannoning into the seven. He may play a draw shot, try and bump the seven out of the way and put some right-hand spin on the cue ball. The only thing that would ruin that would be some sort of line-up of the seven on the five. He got round the back of it no need to get any closer to the five than that confident play by Bustamante at a time when confidence is needed it's around this time in the match that the nerves start to increase just didn't like didn't like the bridging position of his hand there he's he's awkwardly bridge awkwardly placed on the cushion very strong bridge though strong fingers Moves well, Earl Reckons, talking about that bridge, Earl Strickland told me that the Brits, when he saw them first time about five years ago to Muscogee, you have to learn the, f the loop bridge to get maximum effect, he said. Do you, do you agree? Must you use the loop bridge 90% of the time? Well, the loop bridge is, uh, is strange, you know. From a potting perspective, you want to sight down the cue. So if you use the open bridge, as Francisco Bustamante has used there... Uh, you can sight the shot easier. So obviously from a potting perspective, a snooker players are only potting machines, so to speak, that the open bridge is important. But for 
feel and touch and control of a, of a large ball. The loop bridge is also a very important weapon. A variety of bridges used by Francisco in bridging the gap to come back to a tool. Bustamente retains control of the table. Once again, that back heel completely coming up to the floor. And actually, uh, Bastamenti could very well get a, a sponsored logo on his sole of that foot. <laughs> it's in show quite a yeah. lot. Uh, Frank Bruno's the other person I know that uh, can have one of those. So maybe uh, a soul food store. Busta here then, uh, looking good for 9-8 in a race to 11. Heart of the pocket. Somewhere down the line there's going to be a critical point in this match where the balls don't go in open play and a big decision has got to be made and a big rack is won. It hasn't happened yet, it would be unlikely if the whole match was played with, without that most critical moment but at the moment in open play Buster Bente is very much on course he retains the break off marvellous break look at the control on that cue ball hit dead center on the one top spin whipping the ball back to the middle of the table you can't ask for a better break than that he's got to be careful he doesn't lose the one over the pocket and send it along the top rail oh that was magnificent as well knew exactly what was going to happen every reason to believe that Buster Mente goes two racks in front with three to play it's been a marvellous match but possibly not the match that Reyes would be uh, hoping for I think Reyes would excel in a match where clever shots were needed in open play perhaps Buster Mente the better player we just you know we're talking about fractions well we've been talking about him ever since uh, he hit the American tour about 12 years ago as a future world champion uh, Buster Manti uh, he was 1998 player of the year 1998 he was number one on the camel tour in the world championship here he got to the semi-final when Efren won it just sneaked in perhaps a little bit of nerves and tensions coming into that shot but he did play the ball at the right speed gave it every chance of dying into the pocket and all of a sudden, Bustamente once again in perfect position. And also, uh, thinking back along the match, that jump shot, the third jump shot that Bustamente played, how important has that, uh, that been in the match? He was in all sorts of trouble there until he cut Here that ball. Here we go, in. and two cushions to make this. He could do this standing up in the dark in a hammock
great break. Got a bit of action on the one he didn't want, on, on the on the cue ball he didn't want. Oh, but look Ooh. how the one has landed. Game over, you'd reckon? Very much. Monstrous break again from Bustamante. Didn't like what happened to the cue ball. It got a massive kick off the green six. so close and looks very cool and very collected and you wouldn't bet against him missing any of these last three balls trickles the green in sweet as you would like sweet as you'd like on this black uh, just got to work it uh, into the cush game over Francisco Bustamante sinks the hopes and the former champ Edwin Romero.